Hi, good morning everyone. Today I want to talk about probiotics. There's a large probiotic market out there and there are so many brands selling different probiotics and we think that when we have gut issues, we think that when we are bloating, when we have flatulence, when we face acidity issues, that popping a probiotic is the simplest way to improve your gut health. Now, yeah, we need to constantly look at gut health. And the reason I keep on stressing on the point of why your colon and why your gut should be clean is because 75 to 80 percent of your immunity starts in your gut. And let me repeat why immunity is so important. It is the thing that protects you from disease. It is what can protect you from cancer. It is what can heal you when you have a cancer or any disease for that matter. Think of it as your last line and your first line of defense in the human body. All of us constantly are breathing in bacteria, viruses, germs, pathogens, but it's our immunity that allows it to become a disease or become an ailment or it's, our or it's our immunity that fights it and keeps us healthy all the time. So immunity is a whole different subject, but today I want to talk about probiotics because people think that, oh, let me have that kombucha, let me have my probiotic pill, let me have a bowl of curd and it should be all good. But we need to understand that the human body and the gut doesn't work that way. So very quickly, in your gut, you have microbes. You have good microbes and you have bad microbes. Now, the good microbes help you digest your food. It helps, you, it helps your body assimilate and absorb nutrients from the food that you eat into your cells. And that's what nutrition is all about. It's not about just eating healthy foods. It's about enabling your body to break down and absorb all the nutrients from the food that you eat into your cells because everything starts from a cell. Your immunity, the growth of your organs, weight loss, weight gain, hormonal balance, everything starts from a cell. You were born from a cell. So we need to make sure that the nutrients from the food that you eat get into your cells. And that's where all the magic happens. So you need the right microbes that help you, number one, digest your food the right way. Number two, absorb the nutrients from the food that you eat into your cells. And number three, assist the digestive enzymes that you already have in your body to work better. You see, most of us are depleted of digestive enzymes over time due to stress, wrong eating habits, lack of activity, pollution, wrong quality foods, pesticides in the food that we eat, exposure to plastics, environmental toxins, all of that. We're practically depleted of digestive enzymes, which is why most of us go through acidity, bloating, flatulence. For example, here's a little test for you. If you have a glass of vegetable juice and it bloats you up, it means that you do not have the right amount of digestive enzymes in your system. Because when you break down a vegetable into a juice, <clears throat> you actually make it easy for your body to absorb it. Which is why I always say never juice your fruits. Eat your fruits whole, but juice your vegetables. Because then you make it into a constitution that the body can easily absorb because plant vegetables have cellulose which is very hard for the body to digest and break down. So if you're eating your vegetable whole like a, pea, like a bit of carrot, all the more you should be chewing the carrot completely so that it breaks down before getting into your digestive system or you juice it. So now if you have a vegetable juice and it bloats you or you have salads and raw leaves that bloats you, it's not an issue with the vegetables or the leaves. It's an issue with your digestive system. You don't have powerful or the right amount of digestive enzymes to break something that's natural down into your body. So that gives us a sign that we have to improve our gut health. So let's come back into your gut. Now picture your gut as a colony. In this colony, you have good microbes and you have bad microbes. You also need the bad microbes. You also need that, but the ratio has got to be smaller, which means you want more of the good and less of the bad. The problem today is we have more of the bad and less of the good. So before we decide on how to get the good bacteria in the colony growing and flourishing, let's talk about the bad bacteria and what happens with bad bacteria. You are constantly feeding the bad bacteria with what you eat. Now, it's always like cancer. Like I say, if you provide the right energy to a cancer cell, what's going to happen is the cancer is going to grow and spread. But if you stop the supply of food or energy to a cancer cell, okay, you deprive the cancer cell of what it needs, that's when you can say that you started the healing process or you can enable the patient to go into remission because you're starving the cancer cells. But this is not about cancer. Let's go back into the gut. The same thing with your bad microbes. Now, what keeps your bad microbes happy? What keeps them growing? Sugar. 
white sugar, junk food, processed food, highly processed food, genetically modified food, foods that are high in soy, especially gen genetically modified. These are foods that your bad microbes want. Excess salt as well. So now the next time you have a craving for your sugary foods or your fast foods, don't just blame it on your emotions, although your emotions play a vital role in determining your cravings. You have to understand that if you have more bad microbes in your gut, they're constantly hungry and they're constantly generating cravings for the foods that they want. And those foods are the foods which are rich in sugar, processed foods. We never really crave for apples or bananas or vegetables when we have those cravings hit us. It's for junk food because that's your microbes craving. Those are your microbes craving for the food that they need to survive and grow. But the whole of last week we went off sugar which means a lot of us would have changed that ratio of good microbes and bad microbes because we starved the microbes from the food, the bad microbes from the food that they want. Which is why it's very, very important that we go through these phases where we completely reduce our sugar and junk food so that we can change that ratio in our gut. So deprive the microbes of what they need and give them, give your healthy and friendly bacteria what they need to grow, which is enzymes from fruits and vegetables and soaked nuts and seeds and all the healthy foods that you eat. But today, I'm not here to talk about kombucha, I'm not here to talk about kefir, I'm not here to talk about all the probiotics available in the market because you need to understand it's not about probiotics, it's also about prebiotics. You see probiotics need prebiotics to work as well, it's like food to the probiotic, a prebiotic is like food to a probiotic. So when you have pure apple cider vinegar or coconut vinegar which has the mother culture, it has a prebiotic as well as the probiotic. But what I'm going to teach you today is not something that I've made up, it's something that exists in our Indian culture for years and decades and decades and decades and it's been lost and pushed on the back shelf with the whole flood of probiotics in the market and kefirs and kombuchas and all of these things. I'm against most dairy products today because of the amount of estrogen and antibiotics and hormones they have in them. So what I'm going to share with you is non-dairy and you can make this at home. Your, grandma, your grandmother probably made it for you while you were a kid and it's, what exa it's exactly what we should get back to doing right now and we should have that drink of probiotic every day and once your gut health changes, things like Crohn's disease, IBS, skin issues, gut issues, you're talking about thyroid, all autoimmune disorders, the inability to lose weight. These are all gut issues, leaky gut syndrome. You can reverse this. You can repair the health of your gut when you have the right kind of prebiotic and probiotic going in coupled with the right lifestyle. So let's get straight to it. I call it the great Indian probiotic. It's as simple as that. We don't have to spend money on buying these expensive probiotics and stuff. You can make it in your kitchen and I'm going to tell you exactly how. You need like a, a large glass jar or a ceramic jar. I'm going to post this in the notes post the video. You need about four to five carrots, but I prefer to use three to four medium sized beetroots. Get really dark red beetroots because I like that beetroots has a connection with producing nitric oxide in your body, which is great energy for your cells, great energy for your immunity. So you have beetroots. You have a tablespoon of salt, it could be rock salt, it could be pink salt, it could be black salt and you have a tablespoon of crushed mustard seeds, the little black mustard seeds that jump around in the pan when you add it to hot oil. Yeah, you're going to take a tablespoon of these mustard seeds and crush them, okay? You're going to fill up a liter jar or a liter ceramic jar with water. You're going to add a tablespoon of salt. You're going to add a tablespoon of the crushed mustard seeds and you're going to chop the beetroot into julians, into like thin finger bits and put it in this water. Let me see if I missed anything out. Yeah, that's all. And you cover this with a lid or a thin muslin or a cheesecloth. And all you need to do is put it on your windowsill. Okay, if you're still getting sun in, that's great. So you just keep it on your windowsill so it gets a little bit of sun and it gets shade at the same time. Even if it's not getting sun, that's all right. You keep it for about five to six days. And every third day you take a wooden spoon and you just stir it, stir the contents together. After six to seven days you want to taste it. If it's tangy and sour, your probiotic drink is ready. You strain it, you pour it out. You have a glass of this liquid every day and the beetroot could be eaten like a pickle with your normal Indian food. And that's how you make this probiotic drink. It's that simple. You can make two liters and three liters and store it in your fridge after the fermentation process that happens over a week. 
And this is by far the most inexpensive and simplest probiotic, which is natural to our genes and our country, that you can make and you can store. There are loads of other Indian probiotics also, but the one that I want to talk about is this today. There's also another very simple one where you take leftover cooked rice in the night and you just soak it in a little bit of water overnight. In the morning, you strain the water out, you add like a little tempering of curry leaves, mustard seeds, and a little bit of chili, and you eat like that little small bowl. It could be just three tablespoons of rice, and that's a fantastic probiotic, which is dairy-free again. But the focus today is simply on, I made a couple of notes, which you can have a look at right now. This is it. It's the great Indian probiotic. You have a liter of, wa of water, three beets, one tablespoon of crushed mustard seeds, a tablespoon of rock, black or pink salt. You cover it with a lid or a muslin cloth for about three to six days on a windowsill. And that's exactly how you make this probiotic. It's simple, it's inexpensive, and you have the best probiotic that you could ever get into your system. You do this and I can promise you, you change the health of your gut. When you change the health of your gut, there are so many beautiful things that are gonna happen in your body. Your skin's gonna look better, your hair's gonna look better, your energy levels are gonna improve because your cells get the right nutrients. If you have any inflammation in the body caused because of autoimmune issues, thyroid problems, joint pains, that tends to get better as well when we clean up our gut and let the gut function the way it's supposed to be. Everyone have a great day. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.